I think this course has better prospects than this course, but this course has a more fancy title than this course. But wait first, my friends who studied these courses for their master's degree still don't have something to do with it after many years of graduation. But if I choose this course, I'm likely going to struggle because <laughs> mathematics is not for me. So what course do I now study for my master's degree? Well, in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the three key things to consider and the three pathways to explore to help you choose a master's degree course suitable for you. Are you ready for progress? Choosing a master's degree course is an important crossroad topic that a lot of us will be faced with after our undergraduate degrees. And as a mentor of many, I've been asked this question severally from different people over the last few years. Your choice of a master's degree course is essential because it could serve as both the end of an era and or the beginning of an era. What does that mean? Regardless of how you got to study that your undergraduate degree, whether you chose it or it chose you or it was thrown at you, this is a pivotal opportunity to either go deeper into it by way of specialization or a chance for you to reroute your academic journey so you can arrive safer, better and at a more fulfilling destination. Let's talk about starting points. A lot of people miss it by starting to search for their choice of master's degree course on the website of their favorite universities. Hmm, not a completely wrong thing to do, but this approach can be limiting. Remember that most universities offer courses based on one, their capacity, and two, their accreditation to offer those courses. Which means the fact that a course is listed on a university website doesn't necessarily translate to it being suitable for you. In fact, the suitable master's degree for you may not even be offered at the university you are currently checking out. And if they do have it, it could have a name that you may not be able to relate with. On the other hand, a lot of people make their master's degree course choice for the singular purpose of affordability costs. Fair enough. So before we get too deep into this, let's clarify finance. If financing your master's degree education is a much bigger challenge than the cost to study, then you may want to check out these videos that I made to see the list of the cheapest and most affordable universities in town. It's a very good video and list to explore. And if you start from there, you can now proceed with this later. However, if financing your education is not that much of a big deal, you are just really keen on making sure you choose a master's degree course suitable for you and your future, then let's proceed. Because choosing a master's degree course is a very personal decision, I recommend you do what Brian Tracy calls the quink analysis. The quink analysis is knowing what I now know. Quink means knowing what I now know. Let's say it was daddy's choice that forced you into science class, or it was peer pressure that got you to choose that course for your undergraduate degree while you were writing your A-levels or your jam or whatever equivalent exam you wrote that got you into the university. That's past now. Looking at what you have learned between that time and now, what extra knowledge do you have about yourself? So the first place to look at is the future. What would you like to major in? What is that thing that you would enjoy continuously even in 10 years 
from now. This doesn't have to be a degree title or a university course, all right? It doesn't mean that because you couldn't find it on the website, then it doesn't exist. We're talking about something you're passionate about now. It could be dance, it could be writing, it could be experimenting, it could be drawing, it could be anything that really brings you alive. The goal is for you to be able to finally arrive at a course that brings along with it something that complements your futuristic journey, something that helps you solve a problem. It could be that on your current career path, there's a growth plan that you've got and that a master's degree could key into that to help you achieve that growth. There could be an office, you know, that you are eyeing. Maybe you want to go into politics later in life or there's a position within your industry, within your company that you want to occupy later within the decade and you think you may need a few skills to help you get there. This is how you should look into the future using the quink analysis. The second thing to consider is the present. Look closely at your present work, your present personal life, and figure out things that excite you, things that disturb you, and things that you're curious about. It could be something about your day-to-day -day hustle or a challenge that you have been looking to solve. Remember that a master's degree course is not just a title, it is also an opportunity to study something. To have masters in a particular field is to have spent time mastering something. So make sure you are about to master something that excites you and something that helps you fix a problem or respond to a challenge that you currently have today. The third place to look at is your undergraduate degree journey. How did you perform with the undergraduate degree itself? And the best place and best tool to use for this is your transcript. Your transcript has a subject by subject, course by course detail of how you performed. Now, if you look at all of the subjects, you see how you fared with each. What are the subjects that you enjoyed? Which of those subjects have you found an expression for within your current day-to-day -day life? Which of the subjects did you not do well and why? Which of the subjects did you pass well and why? Which of the subjects did you pass very, very well, so much that you could teach other of your classmates and students. Which of those subjects did you struggle with and why were you struggling with them? Was it about the methodology of how it was taught or the subject and the topic itself isn't just inspiring? All of this will be telling you something and you need to pay attention to those things that they are telling you. And apart from your transcript being a place to look at for inspiration on what to do for a master's, the school you are about to go study for your master's degree would also be asking for a transcript for exactly the same reason. They also want to see how you fared in your past academic life. So it is a good resource for both yourself and also for them. And why not start from there? Depending on how thorough, how detailed, and how truthful you were with your analysis of the previously mentioned phases, you'll likely fall into one of three pathways, which I have categorized as one, stayers, two, tilters, and three, levers. Who are the stayers, who are the tilters, and who are the levers? I'll take them one by each. The stairs are the ones who are found between 70% and 100% relevance between what they study for their undergraduate degree, their current reality, and their future. These are the ones who have sort of established a connection between these three phases of their academic journey, and they don't mind diving deeper. Stayers are often pumped up. They are ready to take on any aspect of the subject or the field because they are kind of convinced they're supposed to be in that field anyways. It is not about being academically smart or bright. It's just a question of relevance. The people who find themselves in this stairs category are not necessarily smarter than the rest of us. They've only found enough relevance between what they study for their undergraduate, their current reality, and the future that they see for themselves. So it is easier for them to make a choice of a master's degree course. It's not because they know everything that will be taught, but they are ready and willing to pay the price that comes with going deeper into a specialization, all right? And the reason they could do this is that their relationship with that field and that subject of undergraduate studies has literally transcended the classroom. And if that is you, 
then dive right in. The second pathway you may find yourself is what I call tilters. Tilters are people who are found between 40% to 69% of relevance between what they study for undergraduate, their current reality, and the future they see for themselves. They have seen the value in the course, but they're not really convinced it is for them as it is exactly. So for them, they will do well in blending what they already have, the degree, with something a little bit more different than that. So you would find them combining what they have studied with something else in another sphere, which kind of is still a good application of what they already have. And if that is you, there's nothing wrong at all. You are totally fine. You are really good. It is not the academic smartness or whatever that we're discussing. It is about the relevance you have found. Remember, knowing what you know now, knowing what I now know about that course and about myself, do I want to stay or do I want to tilt? And for you, there's a lot of options to explore because usually knowledge bases always intersect. There's always an application for what you do in another field and you only need to ask how. The third pathway is what I like to call the levers. These are people who, after a fair analysis and due to no fault of theirs, they haven't found up to 40% of relevance between what they study for their undergraduate degree, their current reality, and the future they've seen for themselves. Again, this has nothing to do with smartness or academic greatness. It comes down to the relevance because you are paying for this degree, you are spending time, and you are becoming something along the way. So you want to become what you would be proud of, something you love. So for the people who fall in the leavers category, they want out. They are better off charting a new course, picking a new direction of degree, which is totally, totally fine. And if that is you, that is also very much okay. However, you need to know that with this category, you have to be very truthful to yourself and it comes with a lot of sacrifice and courage because it feels like you're jumping from one boat to the other and there's that little risk of, you know, falling into the water. So you would love it when you eventually arrive in the new boat but pending the time when you're trying to make that switch it would come with a lot of you know burning the midnight oil sometimes you need to take exams sometimes you need to take some refresher courses you may need to even you know register for a different entry level requirements whatever it is to get into that your new part but it would definitely be worthwhile because it's better than squeezing yourself into a space that you really do not enjoy. And the point at which you're choosing a master's degree offers you that incredible opportunity to make amends to whatever it is that has been troubling you with your journey. This is the 180 or 360 degree chance that you've got to actually change something about your own future. On a general note, and regardless of the pathway you have found yourself on this topic, whether you are a stayer, you are a tilter, or you are a lever, it is good advice to actually get help from educational consultants, especially those who are conversant with this particular topic. In the minimum, you also can speak with your mentor. Based on what your transcript is saying and your journey so far, it is possible that your mentor is able to see angles to your progress that you necessarily cannot see for yourself, all right? That's why we all need a mirror once in a while. And if you need help with that, feel free to reach out to your progress mentor using the link below and I'll be really happy to help. I do hope this video has offered you some clarity. And of course, there's someone within your network who would need to see it too. So please keep sharing this video until someone who knows someone, who knows someone who knows you, is able to benefit from it. And if you have enjoyed something or learned anything at all from this video, please give it a like and subscribe. Make sure you smash the bell icon white so you are the first to know, first to engage, and first to benefit from beautiful, beautiful content like this. It's been your progress mentor, E to the M to the D to the double E, MDT, I'm you signing out, and I'll see you in the next video.